Sarah, it's lovely to welcome you here today Thank as you. CEO of the 1020 Foundation. I've got a provocative question to start with, and I'm very interested in your response to the notion that smart philanthropy isn't all about the money. Uh, and I ask you that question because philanthropy has been supporting initiatives in early childhood for decades, and many would claim that in fact there's been little progress, that the outcomes for a substantial number of children in Australia are pretty dire and moving in the wrong direction. What's your response to that, Sari? Well, that's a big, big question, <laughs> and it's not just about philanthropy. Um, so there's two parts to answering that. The first one, I'll deal with the bigger system, which is, I think, you know, why is particularly early childhood not on the agenda in Australia when we have one in five children that are vulnerable and where we know that there are these postcodes where there are many vulnerable children and families living collectively together and we're not seeing them reach the potential. So, you know, why is that? Well, that's partly because philanthropy is contributing to this bigger system of isolated efforts, of many good things happening, but the dots aren't being joined. We're not learning from one another. There's not investment and scaling up of the things that we know are working or sharing across the system of the things that are, are working at scale. You know, it is a bit of a mess. I think the question and the reframe that we're trying to ask as 1020 is, well, who in the room, who in the communities that really need the support is contributing to some of these result areas and these indicators? And what collectively do we need to start to reframe to deliver on that and realign? In addition to giving grants to those communities, you're really talking about a role that's outside of just the grant, aren't you? And there's a couple of important elements that you brought to the table a helicopter view of the system as a way of bringing people together, this notion of convening. We're moving to start to get some alignment of philanthropy around early childhood outcomes that, are, that where we've got common goals. But I think in terms of the broader system, which is government, NGOs, community groups, um, you know, business, all these different players, they need spaces for these new conversations and relationships to start to to emerge in order that groups who naturally want to act around results you know start to come together and hold each other accountable now that sounds like that's easy it's a long process but I think where we saw more value at this stage than putting money into a system that was in, in chaos anyway was to say well let's reframe a bit here and start to think about how we can work differently and what does it take to fund the capacity to do that and that's everything from systems mapping, business cases, looking at synthesising knowledge that exists or new knowledge that might be overseas um, in other places and pulling it together and making it available to players in the system who have enough influence to do things and think about things differently. The most important thing is for us is to support communities in understanding what they need to achieve, what their strategic plan, if you like, is to achieve the changes they want to see and funding the capacity both to develop that plan but also to mobilise the resources they need and align those around it. The other area that we're holding ourselves to account for is around our ability to align in other funders who are interested in seeing the same shifts for early childhood in Australia and where we can link them to help the, those communities that we know are doing this work really, really well continue their progress. Talk to me a little bit about what role philanthropy might play in facilitating or being a learning organisation itself and facilitating learning across the system. Well, there's a number of ways we can contribute to that. One is, again, um, we can convene all the players who have some of the knowledge and enable the conversations to take place and then the action around synthesising that knowledge and then the delivery mechanisms for communicating that knowledge. And that's something that we're certainly seeking to do through the container of Opportunity Child, which is a, a learning system. Um, so that can be funding, but it also can be us you know, inviting and bringing different groups together to have that conversation. It can also be us calling out, when we've looked across the system, what are the missing pieces of knowledge that would inform and enable everybody else's work? Another, another thing is around, um, again, a collective voice around the, the, the importance of early childhood prevention um, in, 
you know, social change and in resolving complex social issues, particularly things like even domestic violence. You know, when you unpack domestic violence and one of the prevention mechanisms, you'll get to an early childhood um, intervention. So I think it's for us, it's looking for those opportunities to get the collective voice around early childhood. And so we really, um, in a sense, are connecting across the system and looking for opportunities to just accelerate um, collaboration and, and, and therefore impact. So Sari, in terms of that journey, that's an ambitious um, aspiration, highly commendable, ambitious. In terms of that journey, what have you achieved to date? Where are you at the moment? And we're right at the very beginning, so <laughs> of this massive journey. Um, but you know, what else, what other option do we have but to proceed? I think if we really want to see better outcomes for kids and for Australia to achieve its potential as a nation, there's nothing but to keep continuing and not to be put off by the ambition. Um, it's, a hard, it's, it's not easy and it's really complex and I think what I've learned from the journey so far is the importance of having other like-minded leaders at the table with you that you can share and build a strong relationship with and that you, who you trust that when things seem to be breaking down in terms of the effort there's this absolute commitment to getting it right and moving through the breakdown to a breakthrough and to the next part of the journey together on this collective approach. So tell me a little bit about some of the things you've achieved to date. Well, we've um, invested um, funding into supporting community leaders and their collective impact initiatives in four communities across Australia and I think are starting to develop what I would see really um, rewarding and two-way relationships with those communities around a whole range of things. Um, so we've done that. I think in a number of those communities, by us participating, they have been able to leverage other funding, both from government but also other philanthropists, into their work. It's the seed funding role and it's the first mover role. You know, in any type of innovation or new social change, you need one person to go first and then it's really important to have the second and third as well to really consolidate and keep it moving. We've been able to leverage some of our funding, which isn't significant, into much bigger pools of funding into the things that are working, um, which is, is fantastic and that hasn't been so long. And I, look, I think the other thing that we've done, um, it's early stages, but it's certainly brought together a group of critical stakeholders in the early childhood space across Australia through the Opportunity Child Initiative to start to think about how they can work differently together and to start to work in partnership to resource up the communities and the families and the kids to change the outcomes and the trajectories and uh, you know for those kids and those families. So and that's a pretty impressive start, Sari. What are the big things, three things that you're going to be focusing on for the next 12 months or so? Well, I think for us um, it's building the sustainability of some of these, these initiatives. If, if they're starting to achieve some results, and in some cases some of the communities which um, they've done on their own are starting to see some shifts in some of the indicators for kids, but what, you know, we can't walk away from that. They actually need to be resourced up to continue that journey. And, and we see ourselves playing a really clear, clear role in helping um, the communication of the message, synthesising, you know, what the results are in a collective way, and then starting to go out and raising capital to channel into these communities, particularly into the leaders who are doing the coordination work on the ground and the alignment work to ensure that it can continue to move forward in what is a continuous improvement cycle but is very much a different way of working and a different way of utilising resources in, the, in communities around early childhood. Thank you very much, Sari. Thanks, Lizzie.